little, we loved nature shows. One reason was because we didn't have cable, and it was one of the few things we actually got a TV signal for that didn't require you to dance around with the TV antenna for reception. But the other reason was that, of course, it was cool science. It often showed animals that we couldn't see in our own backyard doing some awesome things. But then it would be a little traumatizing when, inevitably, some predator would walk in and gobble the unsuspecting animal up. Truly, action scenes with predators and prey are often shown in nature shows because it's all part of nature's food chains. A food chain starts with a producer. A producer is an organism that is an autotroph, which means that it makes its own food. A plant, for example. The plant is eaten by a primary consumer, this grasshopper here. Consumers are heterotrophs, which means that they need to feed on other organisms. The primary consumer is eaten by a secondary consumer, this frog. The secondary consumer is eaten by a tertiary consumer, this snake. And the food chain can keep going. Notice how the arrows are supposed to point in the direction of the one doing the eating, which makes sense because that's the direction of the energy flow. You can also arrange the same food chain into an energy pyramid. The producers are at the base here. In trophic level one, they actually contain the most energy. What is crazy to think about is the primary consumers here, in trophic level two, they actually only store 10% of the energy from the producers. Meaning, let's say the plants here had 10,000 kilocalories. That's an energy unit of energy. Well, the next level here, the primary consumers in trophic level two, they would only store 1,000 kilocalories of energy. So where did the rest of the energy go? Much of it is lost in heat or undigested. If you go up to the secondary consumers in trophic level three, that would be only 100 kilocalories of energy. So as you go up each trophic level, it's roughly only 10% of the energy from the trophic level below that will be stored. Back to our food chain. Notice that like a domino effect, if something is removed, let's say the grasshoppers, you can harm the others because they might not have enough to eat. You really have to consider the relationships among organisms in a food chain. In fact, even if you took out the apex predator in this particular food chain, which is the snake, you could end up with an excessive population of frogs and so many frogs that it's possible they wouldn't have enough grasshoppers to even support them. You know, this is actually not a very good model because in real life, this snake probably doesn't just eat frogs. It probably eats rabbits and birds too because an ecosystem doesn't typically have a single food chain. Instead, it has more of a food web. A food web is made up of multiple food chains that interact together. So notice how now we have multiple food chains here tied in with our original to make a food web. The beauty of a food web is that it shows more interactions among a variety of producers and various level consumers. It also can show biodiversity. Biodiversity is the variety of organisms, all types of organisms, living in a given area. The size of the area that we're talking about, as well as the climate of the area, directly affect the biodiversity that is present. Biodiversity can contribute to the sustainability of an ecosystem. What I mean by that is, let's say there was a decrease in the amount of small birds in this food web. Well, it's likely that will be harmful to other organisms. However, it is not the only thing that the snakes feed on. They have other options because of the biodiversity. The snakes also eat rabbits and they eat frogs. So because of this biodiversity, the ecosystem might be more resilient to changes such as these and possibly recover. However, these changes can still have detrimental effects and it's why it's critical to protect ecosystem biodiversity. High biodiversity has a lot of other benefits. They can include economics, and we'll need another video to really touch on all the benefits of high biodiversity. So if we were to ask you which of our examples here had more biodiversity, our food chain here or our food web, you would definitely want to pick the food web. One last thing, there are some organisms that we left out of our food webs and food chains, but they're kind of a big deal. Decomposers. Decomposers are heterotrophs since 
they do eat other things, even if the things they're eating are dead. Decomposers include organisms like bacteria and fungus. Technically, if we were to draw them in, then every arrow here would eventually point to them. Well, that's it for the Amoeba Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. Thank you.